good Wednesday morning. Wanted to just spend a couple minutes with you today and share a, a brief devotion with you. Before I do, though, I just want to say, wow, what an incredible couple worship services we had Sunday morning. 9.30 and 10.45, it was just so great being back together, and I know that it was a blessing to you, and I know that if you were not able to attend, that that's okay, and uh, you just plan on coming whenever you feel like it's best for you and your family, but it God was just, he really was at work in our services uh, I, I just want to remind you that we're holding services on Sunday at 9.30 and 10.45. And uh, we have a registration for those. So if you have yet to register for the service you're going to attend, then do that. Just so we'll know which service you are planning on attending. And uh, also that we have guidelines. We want you to really... Look at the guidelines so you will know what we're expecting of you. And, I mean, most of those just, they fall right in line with the other recommended guidelines that are out um, in regards to safe social distancing and those type of things. Uh, but you can find all of that at our, at our website, pleasantgrovehickson.com. And uh, I look forward to seeing you back this coming Sunday, but I just want to share with you briefly something that God was stirring in my heart this past week, and I just want to begin by uh, talking or sharing with you what it says in Matthew 5, it's the Beatitudes, and Jesus begins by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that word blessed uh, is the, the thought of happiness. But it's really more than just more than just happiness. It's, it's like a, a happiness, a joy and a happiness that, that comes from God. It's a, it's a divine happiness that comes from knowing Him and being a recipient of His blessing. Uh, and so as I think about that, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Uh, I began to think about poor in spirit, and what, what does that mean? And what that is referring to is humility. And so, saying, happy are those that are humble. And in 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter describes some elements about humility, uh, what God desires, what He expects. So I want to share some of those with you because I think it's going to help us understand how God has called us to humility. And it's also going, this passage is also going to share with us some things about God that should excite us. And so it's in 1 Peter chapter 5. At the end of verse 5, it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Then in verse 6, it, it has this command for us. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. A couple things I just want to point out to us is, number one, we are commanded to humble ourselves, humble ourselves. God expects for you and I as believers to be people of humility, um, to, to not have, be arrogant people, um, to not be boastful people, but to be humble, be humble to one another, be humble in our surroundings and the things that are going on around us, to not think too highly of ourselves in a prideful way, but humility really points 
to the fact that we understand that we are nothing apart from God, that Jesus is everything for us, that we are who we are because of God's love and his grace towards us. So that's why it says, God, he opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And understand that humility is best seen as being under the mighty hand of God. That's what it says here. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And so it's a, there's a sense here of the way we humble ourselves is aligning ourselves underneath God. His leadership, His guidance, His word, His desires for us, His commands. And as we, as we do that, as we align ourselves underneath God and His leadership, we, we hit those places of humility. Think about that, the beautiful gift of prayer that we have, the, 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 the blessing that God allows us to pray. He's always there for us. We can always call out to him. We can always talk and speak to God. And you know that prayer, when we, when we turn to God in prayer, that most of the time that is done in an act of humility. Think about it. You turn to God and pray because you know you need him, because you know that you are weak and he is strong. And so God says, humble yourselves under me, under the mighty hand of God. He says, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Then he goes on to say something else that we can do. Not only should we humble ourselves, but he also says, I want you to cast, throw out, hand over, give to me, cast all your anxieties on him. Uh, what a wonderful command from God that he says, I want you to give me, I want you to cast, I want you to turn over your fears and your anxieties, your stress, all of that. I want you to give that over to me. I want you to cast that over to me. So we think about that. He says, humble yourselves. And he says, cast your anxieties on me. And then it, in that passage, there's a couple things um, else that we can take away related to related to God. And I, I think is a real encouragement to us. Number one, it says what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. When we, when we think about God, as we think about him, do not forget that God is a mighty God. When we humble ourselves under God, we're not humbling ourselves under someone weak or incompetent or uh, someone that's unable to give victory. God has already won the victory, and God gives the victory to us. He is mighty. Uh, he alone is all powerful and and he is a mighty god he is the mighty king and that's an encouragement to me to know that i can come underneath god and i can humble myself before him and trust that the mighty god is with me and he is for me and it says that he will exalt us and so what a beautiful picture that if you will humble yourself God blesses, he exalts you. But if you try to lift yourself up in your own strength and own power, God is going to oppose that because God knows what is best. and He desires to lift you up. And then what else? Casting your anxieties on him. But why? It answers, why cast your anxieties on him? Because he cares for you is what it says right here. In verse 7, because he cares for you. What an awesome truth today to think about. That the mighty God, he cares for you. That's a source of encouragement for me today to consider the fact that God cares. He cares for everything that's going on in our lives. 
He's with us. You know, God cares for us in such a way that he has given us the ultimate example of humility. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2 that Jesus did not consider all the glory that he had in heaven a thing to be grasped, but that he humbled himself and he let go of those things to come to this earth to be born as a man, to be a servant, and to even humble himself to the point of death, and not just any death, but death on the cross for you and me. See, Jesus has given us the example of humility. And he says, have this mind, have this mind, have this attitude of humility in yourself the same way Jesus had that humility when he came to this earth. God cares for us and cares for you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for your sin. If God cares for you that much, you know what you can expect and what you can believe that God cares about everything that's going on in your life. That, friends, is a source of encouragement for us today. Humble, humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. Thank you for joining us this morning for this devotion. And remember, you can check out the information about our services at PleasantGroveHickson.com. We continue to live stream on Sunday also. In case you're wondering about that, the live stream will not start exactly at 9.30. That is when our services start, but the live stream will actually start closer to 9.45. I look forward to seeing you, and I look forward to bringing a word to you Sunday morning. God bless. Have a great day.